The link for this evening's class is is currently in the in the chat. If you look into the chat, you will find the link for this evening's class, which is going to be live for those of you who would want to share that link with your friends or colleagues or associates, or you would want to review it. The link for this evening's class is is now shared in the chat. Um, I want to thank you so very much for coming to the class of Steel Steven, you're very welcome. Today is Monday, the 12th of July, 2021. And present in the class this evening are um, our governing members. We have our COO in the person of Her Excellency, Doreen Baruji. We have also our Chief of Protocol, His Excellency Donald Ewers. We have our Youth Director, we have also those responsible for the Franco region. And we also have, um, what a privilege always to have with us, one of our founding members from the class of steel, His Excellency Barrister Anthony Uwechia. And we also have our Monarchs of the Nations leader, which is in the person of Her Excellency Bishop Dr. Comfort out of Ghana. And this evening, we are privileged to have the presence of Mr. Shane Marshall. Shane Marshall is one of my very close um, mentees, but he's also a close brother and friend from the island of Barbados with us. Um, I met Shane while my wife was doing flight school. Shane is also a, a student pilot like my, my wife, they're both pilots, and, and he's an amazing individual. I find him to be very genius in his mental approach and, and his understanding of dynamics. And during our mentoring, we develop a very strong relationship of understanding the dynamics of communicating what you say and what you hear and what was said and, and what was meant. And, and, and his Shane and myself, we got together and we decided an interesting thing to, to share in the class of steel, based on the fact that we are ambassadors, we deal with diplomacy, communicating, and across different barriers and boundaries, we thought that a communication session was in order. And I thought if anybody else, I would love to share that um, session for the class of steel, it would be, of course, my mentee, Shane. So without any further ado, I will allow Shane to introduce himself, tell you a little bit about himself, and he will jump right into this evening's class. After this evening's class, after the presentation by uh, our brother Shane, you are gonna be free to ask questions, make comments and submission, and we're all going to learn together. So please give a class of Steve welcome to my brother Shane Marshall, the way that we, we do it. <laughs> welcome Shane. We're not, we're not hearing you come through, buddy. Check your audio. Yay. Better? Yeah, we got you, buddy. Well done. OK. OK, so. Um... Well, we're talking about communication today. So as you can see, that's one of the key points of communication is to actually, or you as a recipient, to determine if you can actually 
hear the person that's actually trying to communicate. So as you can clearly see, we actually didn't uh, communicate very well there. I was doing this, but no one, no one uh, could actually hear me. So that's uh, pretty interesting that we're actually going to start off talking about communication on that point. Um, OK, so my name is Shane, Shane Marshall. I'm the managing director of Kiji Manitou Studios, Inc. That's a local software development and engineering firm in Barbados. Uh, yeah, we pretty much develop software. Um, I've been in the industry for about 15, oh, 15 years, and I've been doing development and software com or computer science, I should say, for about 20 years. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I would consider myself a stalwart in the in the industry, but you know. Um, yeah, so I'm here today, and we're going to have a conversation about um, communication. So if we can just uh, give a Brief, a brief example of what you believe communication is. So I'll leave the floor open. And we can start with, let's see, I see Zioness Amaka Curry. So what would you say is communication? How would you define communication? Yeah. Um, communication is... Um, Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> Why are these people doing this to me? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Communication is a two um uh is a two way uh, dialogue between two people. Um and I think one of the greatest aim. Oh, I can't talk now. How do I 10 people of communication is a dialogue between two people and the end result is to ensure that we actually understand each other no <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm ever so sorry about that. I don't know how to turn that mm -hmm. off. And um, it's a call from a pastor. Uh, yeah, so it's a two way um, dialogue between two people and the aim is to ensure that you know there is an understanding of what is being uh, communicated. The subject of uh, the subject being uh, relayed is effectively relayed and effectively uh, received. Excellent, excellent. I like I like that point. Uh, let's see. Let's go. We're going to take. Let's see if we can get three three different perspectives on communication. How about we go with Jeannie, Jeannie Steele. Hello. Now, for communication, I would say that it's um communication. Well, effective communication happens when two persons or more um says something or gives information and it is understood. I think it's effective when it is understood. That's the most important part of communication. When it is said in a clear enough manner or relayed in a clear enough manner that is understood by the other party. Sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good. Okay, so let's go to one more person. Uh, let's go with Mr. Daniel Sopuru. Yeah, um, communication is um, when um, two people or more talk. Well, it is an art of uh, trying to pass information and um, trying to make uh, the recipient understand what you are saying and uh, you understanding also what the other person is saying. Well, it is um, an art of uh, trying to understand uh, one another. That's the way I say it. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so having said that, we have three, <clears throat> three different, well, three points of view that are very similar, and they're pretty much saying the same thing. So I'll just go to, I'll just go to an online resource, which is what I usually do. 
to actually find the definition for pretty much anything. So it says communication is the act of developing meaning among entities or groups through the use of sufficient, sufficiently mutually understood signs, symbols, and semiotic conventions. So that's really, really interesting. It's in Claude Simmons's and Warren Weaver's influential model, human communication was imagined to function like a telephone or telegraph. <clears throat> so that's really, really, really interesting. So um, I guess to give a perspective on communication, I'll, I'll use, my, use my profession and career as an example. Um, that's uh, a software developer slash programmer. So in essence, what, what we are meant to do or what we're trained to do is take language, um, ideas, concepts, all of these things and convert them into scientific and mathematical terms. So we can use symbols, we can use language, we can use different um, tools to actually get that done. So believe it or not, <laughs> the, the skills of a programmer are not really as essential as good communication skills, believe it or not. So say for instance, uh, someone wants to develop a, a piece of software, right? And they want to develop an app or they want to develop pretty much anything that's uh, computer related. First of all, it has to come from their, their mind and their imagination. And then from their mind and imagination, it's going to come from their voice or a pen. So that's going to be the medium of communication. So they're going to tell you about it. They're going to write about it. And that's going to be their communication to us, the programmers, or to us, the developers. <clears throat> so believe it or not, that is the critical, critical, critical point of having well, good software or a good, a good product actually, or a good service, that effective communication. So when a client or when, say for instance, someone that actually wants, someone that wants an app built, they need to really communicate very, very clearly. And your message needs to be interpreted accurately for you to actually get what you actually want. So yeah, so believe it or not, your skills your skills with coding and skills with development and your skills with everything else, they're really not as critical as being able to effectively interpret when someone is communicating to you. Because quite frankly, there's a, there's a concept that we have in computer science and it's called GIGO, which is garbage in, garbage out. So if, if someone is explaining to you something that it just is muddled, it's confused, there's a lot of noise, there's barriers to communication, then you're likely going to get garbage out, which is not a very good product or anything like that. So yeah, so that's just pretty much communication in the concept, in the context, sorry, of, of well, computer science and software engineering and programming and software development. Yeah, so that's one of the key aspects. So, um, can we talk about the barriers to communication? So what would, uh, what would you guys say are the barriers to communication or barriers to effective communication? So I'll pick three people at random. Uh, I'll pick uh, Mr. Donald Evers. President, good evening, sir. I Hello. The, the barriers of communication of lack of understanding in the sense that you're communicating to me and I don't understand a word what you're saying. So lack of understanding, sir. Okay, perfect. So we'll go with someone else. We'll go with Miss Doreen Burungi. Burungi, sorry. Uh, okay, um, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Um, the, the barriers of communication could also be uh, silence. <laughs> silence. Oh, yeah. being, not, being, not, being not able to, to bring out what you are, um, what you think about a person or a situation or it depends on what you are doing so you may not be able to 
speak out. So people will not be able to communicate. Silence. Excellent. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go to one last person. We're gonna go to Florence Marimbi. I hope Marimbi. I hope that's that's a good pronunciation. <coughs> Uh, there are many barriers to communication, but one can be noise. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. there's a lot of noise in the background and the other person is unable to hear communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Excellent. So um, it looks like we have some really, really uh, effective communicators in this entire group because everyone has a very good understanding of what communication is. And, and it seems like, yeah, we also understand the barriers to communication. So um, I'm gonna list, I'm gonna list what, once again, it goes straight to Google and it listed uh, barriers to communication. So they have listed as um, linguistic barriers, psychological barriers, emotional barriers, physical barriers, cultural barriers, organizational structure barriers, attitude barriers and perception barriers. So as you can see, a lot of those are, hmm, a lot of those, a lot of those are, uh, I guess, pretty intangible. They're not, they're not really seen. But as as one person said, lack of understanding, and you can't understand what the person is saying, which is a, a linguistic barrier. Um, if you don't speak the same language, it's kind of difficult to understand what uh, the person is saying. And as 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 people from the well, the African diaspora would know. Uh, those are those tend to be barriers, but they can also be broken down with the use of other modes of communication, which are we can well we call them pigeons. I'm not sure if we are actually familiar with that in uh in yet. So I mean we we we've developed pigeons in the region as well. Uh, they're also used in on the African continent. So when you're not actually when you're not really speaking the same language, you use little little tidbits of parts of the language to actually effectively communicate. So that's that's pretty interesting. So that's that's one of the breakdowns of the linguistic barrier. Uh, someone said silence. So that's uh, pretty interesting. You, you can't really communicate if you have radio silence. Um, yeah, you, you just can't quite frankly. And another one is noise. So in terms of um, in terms of communication of, of, along a uh, like a oh well, oh would I say this? Um, noise. So noise is actually a barrier to communication. It actually disrupts effective communication. So I'm not sure if everyone's aware, but voice and 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 speech actually travels in waves. So it hits particles and it travels in waves. So once you hear noise, or once noise is actually disrupting that 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 the course of that wave then the recipient is not likely going to hear your, what you're saying because the noise is actually interrupting interrupting what's being said. Um, so I like how Ms. Doreen Burun, Berunji actually started it or started her explanation. She actually asked if, if we can hear her and if we can hear her well. So that's really interesting. So I'll point this out to you guys as well. That's one of the key components of... of our training in aviation, and Jeannie could probably attest to this, that it's very, very, it's, it's very important to be able to communicate effectively when you're flying an aircraft. <clears throat> it's very important to have the communication channels open for, the, for there not to be noise, and for you to effectively communicate as much as you can in as little time as you can. And one of the key components of Opening, an, opening a communication channel is quite frankly to ask the person, well, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? That's, that's one of the simplest things that you can actually do to open a communication channel. And even in computing, that's, that's actually done. So uh, computers usually do something called pinging. So they actually send a short, short message to another computer, and that computer is usually going to respond with a response and say, well, yes, they can hear you. So technically speaking, I mean, I hate to say it, but 
computers uh, tend to communicate a lot better than humans at times because they just, you know, they just keep it really simple and they're, they're like, hey, can you hear me? And the other computer says, yes, I can hear you. They don't really get all emotional and have all these other barriers like uh, the psychological barriers, the emotional barriers, the physical barriers. Well, they do have the physical barriers, the cultural barriers, the, the attitude barriers, and the perception barriers. So technically speaking, computers communicate pretty well, uh, far better than humans, believe it or not. But we design them, so that's that's also like, you know, a nod to us humans. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, so if if I let Jeannie speak a bit on uh, on the communication when we're, when we're flying, if she can recall like uh, the simple things that we do and yeah and then I'll, I'll pass it over to Jeannie. Okay, Han you can... Okay, um, she and Jeannie has Josh in the background so communicate okay. with Jeannie no right problem. now is no problem. <laughs> No problem, no problem. Okay, so uh, um, if there are any, think, if there are any, I think Shane, before you do that, I think you should equally, um, because um, very interesting you brought up communicating as a pilot. Because I I flew with Jeannie, and and I'll be very honest with you, communicating in a Cessna is one of the hardest thing because the noise that is in the background is is horrible. And the interesting thing about that is that's why you're training and you're learning. So I think you should give a, a little bit of background on the understanding of the dynamics at that level, because yeah, even certainly. though that background noise is there, one still has to get the message across and one still has to reach the control tower and stay connected. Certainly. So um, in aviation, and aviation is quite interesting because the communication channels that have been used for is going close to it's going close to centuries now. Um, they're still being used actually. So whereas we have a, a full duplex communication channel right here, we have a two-way communication channel. So at any point in time, uh, myself and anybody on this panel right now, we can communicate openly. So if I say something, you as the recipient can hear it. And if you say something to me, I can also hear it as a recipient. In aviation, you have a one-way channel, a one-way communication channel at all times. And everyone uses that one-way communication channel. So that essentially that means that there's no, there's no um, cross chatter. There's only an open communication channel between the aircraft and, and the tower or any other communicate, any other point of communication, there's only one way and there's only one channel to communicate on. So even in terms of that, it takes a lot of, as Mike, as Mike would say, it takes a lot of discipline, skill, and yeah, discipline and, and skill really to actually uh, fly and navigate an aircraft with all of the noise in the back. And as someone mentioned earlier, noise is actually a barrier to communication. So you actually have to be wary of that because the noise can actually disrupt the disrupt the, the message that's actually being sent. So that's also something that you need to consider. And you also have to consider effective communication because you're trying to get as much information to the tower or to any other point in such a short period of time because essentially you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to hold the lane or, or, or to or they just say like manipulate or hog the lane when you're actually communicating with any of these other points, because there's only there's only a one-way communication channel, and at any at any point in time, other people are gonna have a need to actually get on that communication channel, so they might actually queue to actually use the communication channel. So at any point in time, you really need to be as effective as as you can be, um, short, um, concise, effective when you're actually communicating in aviation especially. So as, as Mike said, and he's quite true, um, he's spot on accurate. It's, it's remarkable how well aviators communicate in that environment with the, with the, <clears throat> the noise, the noise, the, of course, the, the added, um, 
the added pressure of actually flying the aircraft and communicating your your whereabouts, your 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 actual state, all of these things with a another entity on a one-way channel. So at any point in time, say for instance, uh, you're gonna click to open the channel, the message can only be sent. So someone can't talk back to you immediately, or someone can't talk back to you at the same time you're talking to them. It has to be sent and it has to be received, one-way channel. So that takes a lot, a lot, a lot of skill, um, discipline, and, and quite frankly, uh, let's just say it, courage, quite frankly, to actually do that and do it well. And one of the, funny enough, one of the most remarkable things I found when I've actually, you know, um, sat back seat with uh, aviators is how well they communicate. So one of our colleagues, um, what's his name? Uh, Romel, yeah, one of my aviators, one of the fellow aviators, Romel Hall, his his communication skills are impeccable and funny enough his communication skills are impeccable because he's currently an aviator however he did work as ground crew and he did work in the tower previously previous to becoming an aviator so he has the he has the approach from both ends of the spectrum so he knows how to communicate to the aviators and he knows how to communicate as an aviator and when i say his communication skills are impeccable i sat in the back and I was like, whoa, I could I wish I could communicate that well. I wish I could be as as concise, as short, as as effective as him. So uh, quite remarkable. So I'll just leave that there. Um Mike, is there anything else? Uh uh no, Jean just jumped in and she says she's she apologized, she stepped out and she's available to share her thoughts on communication uh as a as a as an aviator. Um, Jeannie, you are ready to unmute yourself. You're able. Yes, um, I'm not. I'm not quite clear on the question Shane was asking at the time. I'm, I apologize. I moved away. I was dealing with Josh. I'm not quite clear on what exactly you were saying at the time when you asked me to unmute. Yes, yes. So it was just. Uh, it was just all part of communication. <laughs> yeah, so just an open forum on, on communication and aviation because I just wanted to give allow you to give your, your feedback and your experiences with, with well the communication when we were doing our aviation course. Oh oh yes. Communication is vitally, vitally important in aviation as and as well as being calm and collected. Um one of the things you can note is that in the industry, all pilots around the world have to speak English. Every yep. pilot must communicate in English. You can't, pilots can't speak in any other language. They can't speak in their native language. Every pilot that exists on this planet, their first language of communication, their only language of communication when they're doing their job as a pilot has to be English. So that the communication is always clear and, and on point and understood. And then as well, there are um, specific codes in, in aviation, which the pilot, which pilots know. So um, like we call it telephony, where the letters in the alphabet have particular um, words associated with them. So when we hear Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and it goes on down to the letter C, there are particular words. You call it telephony. Um, there's stuff like that that each pilot knows. So when they want to communicate certain things like the weather or um, anything like that, anything to do with aviation, using telephony is makes it understandable. Or if you want to spell something, um, if you want to spell, if you want to spell Cat, just for <laughs> instance, you use Charlie Alpha Tango because if someone's trying to say C and they have an accent and you, you're not clear when they say C, you could think they said S, you could think they said another letter. So using the telephony, you are clear at exactly what the person is trying to spell out to you because everyone is on the same page. So there are a lot of... Um, 
a lot of rules and a lot of tools in aviation to help us communicate well and to stay on the same page. And it's quite necessary to avoid accidents. And um, if there's a, a SOS, we can all understand each other and what is going on. And the control tower, the, those persons, um, the control tower, oh, Shane, help me what you call them now again. <laughs> the ones in the control tower. Uh, uh, the or the individuals in the control tower? Yes. They also have the same training as a pilot. Yeah. yeah and they, they also do. have the same, right. They also have the same training as a pilot because they have to com communicate directly with a pilot. So if there's an SOS, everyone in that airspace has to be able to know what's going on so we can work together and help each other and keep the airspace safe. So communication is like almost like number one part of training to be a pilot. It really, really is. It's absolutely necessary to keep everybody safe, keep everybody connected and to know what's going on. So that's my, my take. <laughs> Yep, that was uh, that was brilliant, uh, GD. You actually reminded me of a lot of things that I kind of forgot. <laughs> so, um, as Jeannie was saying, the, uh, the phonetic alphabet, uh, the phonetic alphabet is A to Z. They're all, um, well, some Greek and some English words, and essentially forces the the communicator to actually enunciate. The letter of the alphabet. So you're in in aviation, you're not really seeing A, B, C, D, D, E, T, anything like that. You're actually forced to if, in, enunciate the actual phonetic meaning of of the letter. So, as Jeannie said, if you're trying to say a cat, you're not going to say a cat. You're going to say Charlie, Alpha, Tango, and even how you how you move your lips and how you enunciate is very important because you you don't want your you don't want your words to be misconstrued. So even in terms of effective communication, and I want to talk about this briefly, effective communication will save you time. That's critical. It will save you time because when you have a, a channel and you're sending a communication, you want to do that. Yeah, the ideal and the optimal thing to do is to do that once. You don't want to have to do that several times over. Because as you imagine, if you're doing that several times over, you're quite frankly wasting time. And as anyone would know, time kind of equals money. So you want to be effective communicators. You want to be able to say exactly what you mean, be as concise, be as clear as you can the first time out. And as, as most of you probably know already, the, the cycle of communication, I think, I believe that's what it's called. It essentially happens in aviation as well. So when you send an, when you send a, a, a communication or a message to any point in, in the aviation atmosphere or, or environment, you're actually going to get a response saying that the, that the message was understood. So that's very, very critical. So when you're sending a communication to someone, it's really not good enough to just send it and have no feedback or have no, no response mechanism. It's always best to get a response. So say, for instance, even uh, when you're ordering something at your fast food restaurant or any place like that, when you give an order, you can actually tell when someone is well-trained in effective communication. Because what they'll do if they're well-trained is guess what? They'll repeat your order to you. And when they repeat the order to you, you actually say yes or no. If you say yes, then the order is confirmed and the end, the end of the communication is there. And then you can proceed. If you say no, then you have to reiterate or re restate your message. And then they will actually go through the cycle again and ask you once again, is this what you ordered? And if you say yes this second time around, then you're good to go. So that's actually very, very important. So. In the field of aviation, that actually happens as well. So a lot of things are copied on the recipient end. So they're going to ask you, is this what you said? Are you confirming this? So on and so forth. And then you say, yes, Roger. And 
even as Jeannie said, you even have terms, signs, uh, specific lingo to actually communicate short, concise, exactly. Like say for instance, um, a lot of aviators, a lot of aviators don't say, yes, that's all good. Yeah, yeah, buddy, or anything like that. They actually say affirmative or Roger or a certain very, very turt, very, very short language like that to actually confirm or say yes about something. Um, as, as Jeannie said, and it's also accurate to break down the, the linguistic barrier, uh, English is a, is a universal standard in aviation. Uh, you could kind of say it's, it's like that for the world as well. A lot of people speak English and a lot of people try to, um, try to, try to use English as a, a communication medium. So typically, if two people don't speak the same language, and I've seen it in I've seen it in environments already. Um, say, for instance, when when I migrated to Canada briefly, I was in a I was in a what you would call a, a welcoming class. So the welcoming class is all of these people or migrants from all over the world, and typically, what everybody would try to communicate with is English. Even if everyone's English wasn't impeccable. They would try to use English to actually communicate with each other when they actually didn't know any other language. So that's even a very good point. And as uh, as Jeannie mentioned as well, uh, signs are really important. So you can actually communicate using signs. And as she would uh, attest, in aviation, we have lots of signs. And it's not only in aviation, it's also in your everyday, your everyday, um, your everyday environment. When you're driving, you have signs. Everyone knows what a a no entry, a yield sign looks like, a uh, stop sign looks like. I hope everyone knows what a stop sign looks like. Um, <laughs> you have uh, you have your wet floor signs, you have signage, you have uh, you have emoticons, you have all types of things that actually convey a message. So even those are all actually lumped into the communication and how you can actually communicate with each other. So um, that's uh, pretty much it. Um, I hope. I hope, I, well, I was entertained. <laughs> I really enjoyed this. So um, I'll leave the floor open to any questions. We, we have okay, a so question from Mr. Anthony Eurasia. Go ahead, Your Excellency. Yeah, yeah thank you so much. Um, this lovely teaching. And we're, I had um, more live on Kainasik communication i know that basically two we have verbal and communication um i believe the classic falls on from verbal so i would probably um on non-verbal communication thank you okay so so I'll point this out. So in aviation, once again, and a lot of a lot of a lot of concepts from aviation can actually be applied to to the real world. So when we're actually starting a communication channel in aviation, we actually ask about the readability of of a message or how well you can actually hear the message. And I think it's on a scale from one to five. One to five. So for Anthony, that readability would have been about Two. two or three because it was it was I could hear certain words but then it would break and then it would chop so your readability was about maybe three so if we, so I'll, I'll ask someone else in the, in the group on a scale of one to five one being one being not so good and five being great okay so I'm gonna ask uh, I'm gonna ask uh, Mike I'm gonna ask Mike what would what would Anthony's readability have been there I say a three Readability 1.5 graduating. <laughs> at, at okay, so I'll ask I'll ask Jeannie what what have, what would have Anthony's readability been there? His readability skill. <laughs> I would say two, um, because there were there were I missed so many words. <laughs> there were so many words <laughs> missed. I got, but I kind of got the gist of what he was trying to say, but because so many words were missed, it can make it, um, your response could be inaccurate. Although sometimes we hear part of a message, 
we think that we um, know exactly what the person was saying and we attempt to answer based on what we heard, but sometimes the words that were missed out were very key words and we will be answering incorrectly. So I would say readability was two. <laughs> Okay, so that that's a very that's a very important point because uh, I heard I heard parts and I heard nonverbal communication, and then I, I kind of said to myself, well, should I answer just answer a nonverbal communication that just you no know, just say whatever? But I don't want to do that. I want to actually get exactly what Anthony's saying, so so we can all effectively communicate. And once again, we can also use other channels as well. So you can use other mediums. So if we can't hear you very well, you, you could perhaps do sign language. You right, could perhaps uh, write in a chat. I mean, write in the chat what, exactly what you're trying to say. Um, you could also write a, a letter and actually mail it to me or mail it to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, there's, uh, there's no mercy. <laughs> Would you like to repeat that? And let's see if we can get your Yeah, so there. please repeat. Yeah, I ask that I would like you to throw more light on kinesic, kinesic um, coming, uh, which comes on the nonverbal communication. I know that we have kinetic and we have um, kinesic. So I'd like you to throw more light on them, sir. Oh, I've never, I've never actually heard those terms before. So, I'll ask you to spell them or write them in the chat so we can actually have a look. Okay, kinetic is actually spelled K-I-N-E-T-I-C. Then kinesic is spelled K-I-N-E-S-I-C. Non-verbal, like in law, we call we have the main. We have the actus where the mm -hmm. actus where is the action itself, the physical act, then the men's where is the uh, motive. So I, I would like you to explain more. Um, like we, we dwelt more on the verbal aspect of communication, but mm -hmm. I want you to dwell more on the men's where. Which is the 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 the, the, the um, um is called kinesic. Okay. Your 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 answer your your excellency. Thank you for a wonderful submission. You 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 create such a challenge. And she and I I would like to I, I this is this aspect of the teaching. I I gave you a remit because I know that after you presented your aspect that I, I asked of you, then I would have dealt with the other aspect of communication and the other barriers. So if you would allow me to um, follow through for you and take up this other aspect, I would be grateful. If, if you yes. are covered in your area and you're comfortable that you have basically submitted what was in your heart to do so, um, I would I would follow through with the other um, aspects of communication that I wanted to do with this evening. Yes, uh, I'm complete. And thank you very much, for Anthony. Uh, I'm actually doing some research now, so I'm actually going to go and look into this. So you can proceed. Um, like, thank you, everyone, for your time, and I'll be listening. All right, don't leave us. I won't. Thank you so much, Shane. Thank you, sir. Come on, let's celebrate Shane. He did well. Um, Shane, Shane spends his time behind um, computers and, and quietly analyzing things and programming. And most computers find it very difficult to be communicators. As a matter of fact, it's very challenging for a computer techie persons to communicate a lot. And, and I, as Shane's mentor, have been pushing him and letting him know, you've got this, you can handle it. And, and he's constantly doing better and better. And he's a very good uh, communicator at this level. So Shane, again, well done. And, and, I, and I, before we, we go on to the other aspect of communication, including the question that His Excellency Anthony, you wish you wish you asked, which I will address. What is your take from, from your personal 
um, growth and development pertaining to communicating and, and what you dealt with this evening. How was it for you? That, that's for you, Shane. Sorry? Shane, you blanked us. My, my question was, how was it for you in light of your presentation this evening and, and getting more exposure into an audience and becoming more confident? How was it for you this evening? How did you find well, it? Was, uh, it, was, it was excellent, actually. Um, so <laughs> a lot of my friends actually uh, have given me the nickname the mouth of the south because I'm always usually talking or just saying things. Uh, a lot of my friends actually say, well, Shane, you have all this, this information in your head. Uh, so it's actually it's actually really good being able to speak, being able to convey a message. Um, hopefully on the receiving end, people understand and appreciate whatever I said or whatever, whatever, whatever I've shared. Um, yeah, and I actually enjoy just just speaking to people in general. I've done it, I've done it. Yeah, numerous points throughout my life. Uh, yeah, and I genu I genuinely enjoy speaking to people. So it's been a it's been a pleasure. I really appreciate you guys having me. I appreciate the invitation, Mike. Um, yeah, and I hope it's not going to be the last. Time. Oh, there are many more to come, Shane. Many more, many more, <laughs> many more. All right, so I want to go into the other aspect of of communication. And, and interestingly, I, I, I think it was very interesting that Shane did not touch on the non-communicative aspects of communication. And the interesting thing about why I like to use cameras when we're having the Zoom meetings is because you get a sense of, of person interest. You get a sense of persons connecting to your message or to what you're doing. One of the key things about communication that I teach all ambassadors and diplomats and business professionals, the most important is eye contact. That's the first and the most important eye contact. You should write that because it's very difficult when you're speaking to individuals and individuals do not make eye contact with you. As a matter of fact, my wife will tell you, I annoy her. I actually annoy my wife very much. Because anytime my wife is talking to me and I'm looking at the computer or I'm working, 90% of the time I have to stop and look at her and communicate with her. Because in as much as it is a habit that I focus on communicating with, it is also a distraction hearing other noise while I'm reading something. As a matter of fact, a very clear example of that was Shane went on to read something, and I know that clearly he didn't hear what I said immediately after because his mind just just delved into what he was doing. And I I contact is critical because when you look at a person, you're doing something else in communication. When you look at a person, you're giving them two aspects of communication at the same time. You're giving them what I see and what I hear. Remember, communication is all about not just what you hear, because what you hear is also very important, but the facial expression goes a very long way in communication. What you see, what is behind his eyes when he said, of course I love you. What is behind his eyes? Of course I love you. Of course I love you. All of those expressions is something different. Of course I love you. So you create an environment of understanding that in communication, eye contact is very important. Don't just listen to your subject, observe your subject very closely. As a matter of fact, I will, I will share with you, Shane and others know me, I deal with, with gangsters and drug dealers and some very cruel people in Barbados that they're, they're, they're not the easiest guys to, to communicate with. And to be quite honest, if you do not make eye contact with those individuals when you're discussing, you will make them very uncomfortable. 
and 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 very much, very much to be noted that if they don't get eye contact with you, you should be very nervous equally. So eye contact is very important. It gives you dynamic of those non-communicable aspects of conversation because you see body language. Body language is not heard through a conversation. When a conversation is going on, body language is only observed by observation. So take that note. Anytime any person speaks with me and they cannot make eye contact with me, I do not have much time for them personally. I do not. And the reason why is because I know they're not taking me serious. I know they're not focused on me personally at that particular point. And I also know they're distracted. And anytime I'm speaking with somebody who's distracted, it throws me off of conversing any further. Are you, are you with me? So please make sure that as ambassadors, as aviators, as individuals, you have communication with eye contact because that gives you the aspect of those non-communicable aspects of conversation that are very key to you getting a well-rounded perspective based on the conversation at hand. Now, here's another point. Zoom and communication over networks have created some very unsavory, very unsavory aspects of communication for us. For example, you can have individuals that are in their own homes or at, at, at their own offices, but their cameras are turned off. And you don't see what is going on behind a turn off camera. For example, I would very give this one because this is one of my favorites. As a matter of fact, I would not be the I would not be the, the, the deliberate on whom I'm referring to. I'm referring to one of my very very close family members, very close. And and I always I always laugh at this particular aspect of conversation. The phone as well. And I'm on the phone. And the person asks, is, is ABC, is ABC around? And by the way, I'm not referring to first lady. My wife is very different than, than that, but it's someone very close that I, I, I just, I'm deemed to share this. Is that person uh, there? And the person is right next to you. And, and, I'm, and I'm saying, yes, they're here, of course. Of course they're here. Do you, you want to speak to them? And I deliberately do it to wind them up because I just love the expression of their face while they're speaking when they don't want to speak. And by the way, please take some notes of what I'm sharing with you because this is very important what I'm sharing. Don't miss this point. So he comes to the phone. When he comes to the phone, oh, hi, how, how are you doing? How are you doing? It's good to hear you. Yes, of course, of course, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm glad, glad, guy. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. All is well with you. It's all well. Yes, yes, of course. How many of you know somebody like that? I know a thousand people like that. How many of you know somebody like that or anybody like that? Or even if that has been you, admit it, because it has been me too. Admit it. But I want to share a little secret with you. And I learned this from being um, a communicator, but also um, other backgrounds that I would not go into. All of that is communicated to a communicator clearly. A person who communicates effectively and knows how communication flows picks up all of that without fear. How many of you get what I'm saying? And when, I, and when I'm speaking to someone and I perceive that, 
I'm quick to say, well, it's good, it's good hearing you. Thank you so very much for, for taking my call. I appreciate it. And they don't hear me anymore. I'm going to tell you why. It's important to know these little points about communication. If you are not going to be genuine, don't open dialogue. How many of you are with me? You won't know from, I'm a mentor, I'm a mentor. If you're not gonna be genuine, do not open dialogue. Keep the dialogue closed. You might hear individuals say, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything. Take, take that note. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything in communicating. Because a lot of times you can come across offensive for the wrong reason. And your conversation or your communication can be misinterpreted. I have fallen prey to individuals that were not well. And I expected a response. And when I didn't get the response, before I checked to find out the circumstances surrounding the individual, you missed the opportunity to recognize that the individual was not well. Always remember in your communicating, let the first thing be first. Find out how the individual is, if they're okay. The Nigerian culture and the African culture have taught me so much about communicating. I know it could be a bit overwhelming, but how many of you know the first thing most individuals say is, good morning, how are you? How was your night? How was your day? How is your family? It seems mundane and tedious and you just want to get on with the business. But how many of you know that this is very important in your communicating? If you're an ambassador and you're at that level where you have to open critical dialogue, be very professional at all times. Don't choose way to be professional, be always professional, always. Another aspect of communication that is important is knowing individuals' names. I like how she did it, it's very important. Individuals can become very offended if you call their names wrong. Because we have English names and we're accustomed to English names, but I had to get accustomed to our Nigerian brothers and sisters names. I had to get accustomed. And, and, I, and I, I, thank, I, I thank God for your excellency and her excellency Doreen and and, and Olusumu and Olukoye because I'm learning. But make it a habit to practice individuals' names. Make it a habit. It will serve you well in your communication. You will never be perfect in it. If you're like me, that you, you deal with people from all walks of life all over the world, it will be challenging and difficult to get it right. It will be. In, Fra in France, if he says, Miss Bucket, because you spell it B-U-C-K-E-T. But she says, no, it's not Bucket, it's Miss Bucket, please. If you say, if you say, a, a, you know, it's, a, and Shane is a linguist, Shane speaks French also. Shane, uh, Paul Francais, très bien, et comprend Francais aussi. Et Daniel Sopuro, et parle Francais très bien. And so Shane and, and, and Daniel, you will have great conversations because both of you speak French eloquently, perfectly. Shane is perfect in French. But the interesting thing is knowing words in French do not give you the authority to pronounce a person's name in English the way it sounds in French. Because J is different in French. So all of these dynamics, if you want to be an effective communicator, you have to learn these dynamics and you also have to pay attention to them. One point that Shane mentioned 
that is very funny to me. Very funny to me. Telephone operators should learn the Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, Golf, Hotel, India. All of those are set words. You don't make up words with it. Some people will say house, house. <laughs> H as for house, I is for ink. <laughs> and, and by the way, you are ambassador and I want all of you to know something. That's not correct. There are actually specific words that are used and they are recorded and they are industry standard. If you are doing anything to do with being a called service advisor, for example, you need to learn them because they're, they're only one set. And when you do that, it gives your, your, your wisdom a lift, a boost. So I want you to learn them, okay? So uh, Shane, what do, you, what do you call them, Shane? So that everybody knows exactly what do you call them? Was that exactly the? Oh, for for you, Jeannie. What do you call them? Please forgive me. Your Excellency, Jeannie. What do you call them? Let me see if the the first lady is with me. You mean the phonetic alphabet? No, I want I wanted the first lady to see if she was with me. I was just wanting to see. The phonetic alphabet, you have to learn it. And there is only one. Just type in phonetic alphabet, and there is only one. And the words are the same. They don't, they don't change. They are industry standard. The phonetic alphabet is industry standard. Don't, don't go say zebra. So it's Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, Golf. Go ahead, Shane. Hotel, India, Juliet, Kilo, Lima. Uh, what's after L? No. <laughs> Lima. November, Oscar. L -M. No, you have Mike. 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 L -M. Oh, Mike. sorry. Mike. <laughs> exactly. You, you shouldn't forget me. <laughs> you shouldn't forget yourself. Hey, you don't forget yourself. <laughs> <You're great. laughs> that's, that's, that's too much humility. Um, November. Oscar. Uh, Papa. 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 Quebec. Quebec. Romeo. Mm -hmm. Sierra. Tango. Uniform. Uniform. Whiskey. Victor, 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 Victor yes. then whiskey. X ray, whiskey, zebra. <laughs> so those Yankee, are the Yankee. Yankee. Sorry? Yankee and Zulu. Yankee. Oh, Yankee, yeah, yes, you're <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Judy. <laughs> Yankee and what is Junior, what is Z? Zulu. And I, and I clearly said to Shane, don't say zebra. And Shane still said zebra, but it's OK. It's Zulu, Yankee Zulu. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to look for it now. I'm going to look for it now and see if I can put it in the chat so persons can download it. Just give me one moment. Let me look for it. And I'll put it in the chat so you can download it. OK. Thank you so very much for that. But it's interesting. There are some things that we just hear them and we just put our own meaning to it or our own saying to it without understanding that some things are industry standard in communication. And, and there are certain dynamics that you, you have to as an ambassador, as a leader, so that you are effectively equipped to follow through with the things necessary for your success. You wanna make sure you know those things. Now, with that being said, I am going to, for this session of communication, because I'm going to go into a next session of communication, 
And I'm actually going to give you a PowerPoint presentation because there's a lot of information and facts that I want you to have specific to communication. But I want to ask, are there any questions so far? I want to ask for questions if you have received, if it's been interesting, or if it has been challenging, or are there any questions that you have as an ambassador and a professional pertaining to communication? Your Excellence, can I speak, sir? Yes, you are free, Your Excellency, Dr. Ewers. Go ahead. Yes, sir. With communication, uh, don't forget with uh, the accents. The accent can really throw you. For example, people from Scotland, when they speak here in the UK, I can hardly understand it. And so it took me a while to listen and to develop the, 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 your listening skills. So communication can be mutual that I understand because you keep repeating yourself. So excuse me, pardon, I don't understand. And it can be offensive to the person mm -hmm. because I keep understanding. And for example, in the Caribbean as well, their accent in the countryside is very strong. And sometimes even myself don't understand. And so it depends on where you're from with communication and the accent together, even though we are speaking English, we don't understand. Does that make any sense, sir? Yes, as, as a matter of fact, very, very, very interesting point that you made, Your Excellency, because it is one that cannot be overlooked. Equally, it is one that we cannot um, treat lightly in our communication um, teachings and training. I, I remember when I first started speaking with Her Excellency, for example, Her Excellency, uh, Dr. Comfort Adu. Bishop Comfort speaks at a very accented tone. She's from Ghana and the Ghanaians speak professional, calm, but with an accent, very strong accent. And I found it extremely difficult to understand the first time that I was communicating with Her Excellency Bishop Comfort, and it's a fact. However, what I've discovered is that with more conversation, and every time I'm having a conversation with, with, with Her Excellency and any Ghanaian, I, I, I have to blank everything around me. I have to. I, I cannot have a, a conversation while looking at my screen and seeing something else or while trying to send a message and, and make sure I'm sending the right thing. I can't do it. If I'm speaking with Shane, for example, and uh, if, if myself, Shane and Jeannie speak in our Bajan accent, it would be very difficult for you to understand us because we're local and it's our culture. But when you find that it's difficult, I want you to know something very important, very important, very important. And this is a good point, Your Excellency. If you do not understand someone, I'm going to give you a secret to understanding. I contact, focus, and blank everything else. If you listen to individuals with the answer to the question that they're asking and your response to them, you will not hear them. I'll say that very, very clearly again. If you listen to any person, even if they're speaking your own language, and you listen to them with the answer to their question in your head, how you are going to be verbalizing your response to them while they're speaking, you are not going to hear them. Shane, do you, do you receive what I just said, Shane? Does, does what I just say compute with you, Shane? Yes, absolutely. A hundred percent, actually. There are individuals that listen not to hear, they listen with a response. They do not listen to hear. 
they listen with a response in their mind. And some individuals don't have the capacity to retain what they wanted to say. And because of that, <laughs> how many of you have ever been speaking to someone and they're looking in their head while you're talking to them? Don't be offended at it. The reason is because the individual is not a good communicator. And as a result of wanting to say something, but not forget what they wanted to say, they're going over it in their heads. <laughs> How many of you get what I'm trying to say? Please, if you get what I'm saying, just give me a wave, because it's all of us. It is all of us. I, I, have, I have sat on pulpits, getting ready to preach my message, and somebody said something and threw me totally off of my message. I totally forgot what I wanted to say because I was focusing on what that person was saying to me and it distracted me. As a matter of fact, one of the secrets of a good communicator and someone who wants to communicate a conversation is the ability to do that the ability to throw individuals off of their subject quite easily and get them on a different subject without them even realizing they've gone down another road. If you're a good communicator, no one is able to do that with you easily. That's why when you're communicating, you want to give your attention to the details of the conversation. You want to make sure you hear the questions that are asked. When I'm, when I'm sat having meetings, how many of you see me in meetings and I have a piece of paper scribbling? Do, do. Sorry, can't see. The reason why I'm always scribbling is because you will never be perfect in retaining everything. We will not. Don't be intimidated by it. Persons like myself that retain a lot, it came as a result of practice. It came as a result of understanding the dynamics of where to put things when you're listening and how to hold on to things. All of these are things you learn. But always be a place where you take quick notes. If you're sitting on a panel, a lot of people embarrass themselves on panels because while individuals are asking questions, they're not taking notes. If you're in a meeting, I, I like Reverend Daniel very much because every class he's taking notes. Any person that I see in the class of steel that is taking notes, I celebrate them. Why? because I know that they are going to retain a lot of what was said. Her Excellency Dori Burundi, she does the same thing. She takes notes because anytime I'm, I'm, I call on her, I say, Your Excellency Dori, I, I want you to, to tell me, Dori, what was the main point that Shane brought out this evening in the class of Steve? What was the main point, Your Excellency Dori, that you would take home from, from Shane's presentation this evening. What was the main point? Uh, barriers to communication, Your Excellency, Dr. Michael Steele. The no, barriers of communication. Is there anything else that, yes, you, uh, that you really found interesting? Well, for me, um, Uh, okay, uh, physical communication and emotional communication spoke louder for me uh, because uh, many times I, I, I've been wondering why people do not res why someone would not respond to my call. And so I will look not only just, I won't wait on their response, but I will also see their physical <laughs> communication and emotional communication before I I will wait for the arrest or before I conclude. Maybe I will 
take time to wait on them so that they can get back to me. So that has spoken to me and I will, I will be more careful, yes, in communicating with people. So I'll look at the whole package. I'll look at the whole package, not just the response. So if it's not the right time to, for example, you, my mentor, Dr. Michael Steele, uh, sometimes I say, as people come to me and they say, can you please tell Dr. Michael Steele this? I say, mm, this is not the right time. I'll have to wait for the opportune time for me to address this because of the way you communicate at that particular time, I can't bring up this, a, 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 a request from, our, from a member of the class of steel. So yes, Sean has done some, he has done good to me. The class has been a blessing to me for sure. I, I have learned a lot. Yeah. Thank, thank you so very much, Dori. I'm gonna do a masterclass um, for, for the class of steel. I, I, wanna, I wanna share this with you. It's, it's gonna be a private one. It's gonna be a private one. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm gonna record it, but it's gonna be private for, for those in the class of steel and, and, and very specific. And I will tell you what some of the content in, in that master class is going to be. It's gonna be private and it's, it's gonna be just for, for the members of the class of steel. The reality of communicating, it's a science. It's a very high science. Communicating or communication is a very high science. And most people do not operate at a level of getting into the meat of the matter of communicating. We don't. We don't engage. A lot of us like to say our mind and receive a response. But a lot of us do not understand the dynamics of what happened when you shared your mind. And a lot of individuals do not know what they're trying to accomplish when they're communicating. We don't communicate, some of us don't communicate with intent. For example, she knows me very well, and my wife knows me, Minister Ewers know me, and Doreen is getting to know me, a lot of you are getting to know me. Please know this about me. If I give you a bad vibe with my communication, I want to say this to you. Chances are, it is my intention to give you a bad vibe. I want you to take a note. Please take a note. Shane, I, Shane, I know you're in this, in this class with us this evening. There are individuals that are in business. A lot of people just do not get it. If they give you a bad vibe, chances are they're trying to tell you something that you refuse to listen to. And you will continually butt your head against a wall. I hear my wife laughing. Here's a point. If somebody likes you genuinely, communication is always going to be welcoming, even if they have to give you bad news or tell you something you don't like. But you will always know that person appreciates you, loves you, values you. There's a difference. Some individuals do not understand the difference between love communication that is very harsh and hate communication that is just trying to get you from around an individual. Are you with me? There is love communication that has no semblance of trying to get you from around the person. It is actually intended to bring you closer to the person with relationship. But if you interpret love communication that is strict, is hard, 
It is hard. It's a, it's a bitter pill to swallow. If you interpret that communication the same way you interpret a communication from someone who was trying to get you from around them, to shut you down, to shut you up, to tell you, I don't want anything else to do with you. you You will miss it. <laughs> and you might potentially destroy a very good relationship that you had no knowledge it was a fantastic relationship. How many of you think I'm a double standard person? Wave your hand at me, and I want you to be honest. It's okay. How many of you think I'm a person, Minister, you're going with your hand yet. <laughs> Hear the question. How many of you think that I, Bishop Steele, am a double standard person? I say one thing, but I mean something else. How many of you think I'm a double standard person when I'm communicating? How many of you think that about me? Leave your hand at me. Okay. So you don't think I'm a double standard person. Let me explain it. What does double standard mean? If I'm communicating with Shane and I have a gross with Shane that Minister Ewers knows and Minister Ewers sees me communicating very calmly when I should be hostile or angry. Does it mean that I am a double standard person? I, I want to ask that question. Zionist, I want you to answer that question. Does it mean that I have double standards? If I explain to you, Zionist, I do not like Joe Blogs. I don't like him. And I don't want to speak with Joe Blogs. I would prefer not to. But if you see Joe Blogs open dialogue with me, and I communicate with him humane, humble, and rational. Do I have double standards, Zionists? Would you Your say Excellen that I have double standards? Your Excellency, I wouldn't say so. Double standard person has got a weak personality and you can deduce them straight away. However, uh, it's not double standard. Our class is as uh, diplomacy, Wait, wait, stop, 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 stop. I want to stop you. I want to stop you. I want to stop you. Come on, give her a hand. Come on, celebrate her. Come on, you got to celebrate her. You have to celebrate her. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. That's what I'm trying to teach you as a mentor. Diplomacy. Diplomacy has absolutely nothing to do with if I like you or I don't like you. Diplomacy speaks of ultimate respect. Write that note down. Zionist, I'm sorry for crossing you, but I hope you appreciate why I crossed you. Diplomacy. Yes, diplomacy. There are lots of individuals that are interested and keen to be ambassadors. Oh, I want to be an ambassador, but you don't have diplomacy. You wear your heart on your shoulder. I could sit down with you and be about to write your death sentence, and you will never know that your death sentence has been signed by me. You will never know. And I don't try to say that to be rude, arrogant, shady, dodgy. No, that's not the reason. You, as an individual, you have to learn to be diplomatic in your communicating. Why? Why is diplomacy important? The mere fact that you're communicating with someone means that you want to get a message across. The mere fact. The mere fact that you are communicating with someone means you have a message you want to get across to that individual. Be it a good one or a bad one, 
a positive one or a negative one. But you want to get that message across. What is the first thing you need to get a message across? A receiver. The first thing you need to get a message across is a receiver. Somebody who's going to receive what you're sharing. How do you get somebody to be a recipient of your message? Respect. You have to respect them. If you show up with disrespect for an individual, immediately you're going to shut down their ability to receive your communication. Immediately. If you are going to be addressing a practice the person have, you have to respect the person's choice for doing what they're doing or for that practice. If you're going to stop someone from driving fast, don't show up disrespecting the person's driving fast skills and ability. The first thing you do is you praise their skills. You open the opportunity for dialogue. And then you diplomatically say, or oh, share, you know, I had one of my co colleagues at a high level that advised me to, to speak with you about your speeding because they thought that it is wise for me to advise you because the next stage is they're going to have you arrested. Are you with me? If you show up with the person with your dialect, you always driving fast. You foolish. You don't have no sense. You idiot. How could you be? How, how could you? How could you think with your, your human mind that it makes sense to be driving fast like this? Are you are you are you sick? Come on. Are we going to get through to that person? Come on. Let, let's 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 look at how we address some things. I as a father sometimes I, I get frustrated with Josh when he does something and I have to slip back into humane diplomatic mode. All of us do it. But in communication, we have to have respect. With that, I'm going to close the class this evening because I noticed that individuals are tired and I don't want to belabor the point of communication. So if there are any other questions, I will take questions. Are there any other questions? Zionists, please go forward with uh, completed. And thank you for bringing up that point in diplomacy. I appreciate it. Thank you, Your Excellency. Um, I'm just wanting to draw um, a connection between lack of contextualization and what, what one of uh, His Excellency mentioned, the kinesthetic communication, which is body language. Reason being for bringing this um, for clarification is uh, my coming to this country and even up to this very point has always had an issue where lack of contextualization, who I am, where I'm coming from, creates this uh, problem between uh, uh, the person I'm communicating with. How can we resolve the, you know, um, uh, the issue of, of lack of contextualization is affecting us Black people um, in job in every dynamics of work of life. If we are not within our own culture, and even within our own culture, we still have this issue where there are different clans and different dialects and so on and so forth. But most importantly for those of us in the European nation, and um, how, do we, how do we resolve this issue of lack of contextualization, people not understanding, either not understanding or not willing to understand who we are, where we're coming from, and, you know, communicating or listening with empathy. How, I mean. 
the, 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 the term context is a very internalized term. You see, the, the context in which you are communicating with me is based on all of your personal dynamics, all of the dynamics that make up you, that make up your awareness, that make up your perception, that make up your paradigm. All of those are wrapped up in, in, in context. And every single individual have contextual dynamics that conflict, all of us. She hears me through the ears of his upbringing because his upbringing is so different. And a lot of times as his, as his mentor, he would have to ask me so much, so many questions. I, and she and I wanna, I, I, I think she and you and I are, are good to dialogue this protect, particular uh, issue of context because we look at the dynamics of where you were born, how you were raised, how you see life, how your parents are, and, and, and you see things through those eyes. She and us get a little bit of dialogue on that um, dynamic of context because that's also very important. What is your take on context, Shane, in light of even our own mentoring with me and yourself? Uh, <clears throat> context is really important because it, it compartmentalizes. Well, it actually, well, it puts in the context, quite frankly, the entire communication, say, for instance, the themes, uh, the feelings, the framework, quite frankly. So, yeah, context is really important. When it, when it comes to communication, it's really, really important, actually. So we, so we recognize. So, Go ahead. But I have to I have to drop my uh, mic because I have a, another uh, engagement. So I'll bid you farewell. Thanks again for having me, everyone. Thank you so and much for being with us. I appreciate your time, and and the recording yeah. will be available after as well. All right. Thank you. Enjoy, everyone. All right. Bye, bye, guys. Bye, bye. So, so context, and to answer your question, we as a, a people, a culture, a lot of times we want people to understand us, but they never will. <laughs> this is a sad fact. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be very honest. I'm gonna be very honest. They never will, they can't, they, they cannot. They, they cannot, they cannot understand us. And, and the reason why I'm saying that, that I really want us to get this is because, for example, I, I became so empathetic with those in Nigeria and Africa when I went to Africa, when I was on the ground. I'm being honest. All the times you would be thinking, what is this? Are you not a human being? Don't you understand that these are simple ABC things? Don't you understand these dynamics? Don't you understand that if you're doing business, these are fundamental things? They're not rocket science. Don't you understand this? And the interesting thing, which is heartbreaking to be very honest, to be very honest, is those on the less would like those in Africa to operate like they do when they've never been to Africa. Mm. They've never been to Africa. When I say to individuals in Barbados that I have experienced some serious dynamics that come into the UK, when I look at individuals not understanding but how could you, how could you survive this? How could you survive that? Well, it wasn't a survival thing. You look at persons in Nigeria and Africa and think that they're suffering and they're dying because you see photos with, with babies, with protruding stomachs, but you don't understand. That is normal. That's a way of life. They, they're, that's just the way it is. That's just the culture they, they come up with. That's just the dynamics. Equally, they have those that are in business that are successful. They have those that are in very wealthy environments. All of the dynamics play out. But 
I remember, and, and, and by the way, this is all about context because I also want you to understand context and, on, and having others understand us is our ability to first understand the dynamics that we are getting involved with. When I went to, to Nigeria, I was staying in Abuja in one of the very wealthiest areas in Abuja where all of the top officials, they, they, they were in a gated community. And one night at about two or 2 a.m., I was walking with my, with my colleague, the bishop that was with me, and we were just walking through the gated community, talking and, and sharing ideas. Now, back in Barbados, the wealthy community is the white community the very wealthy community in the islands. We, we are accustomed to the islands being the areas where the white community is the wealthy community. I want to be very honest. When I was walking through that area, I was so conscious and uncomfortable that I was out of place. And then my mind said to me, Michael, how could you feel out of place when you are a black man in a black community with black people that look just like you? Everybody looks like you. The only person that felt out of place was the white bishop that was with me. Why? Because he does not belong there. He felt so out of place. What am I trying to say? Our own thinking dictates how others receive us. Nobody looks at me and gives me any problems in the UK. I have never in my life experienced what individuals call as racism. Why is that? Because I don't see black, or I don't see white. I don't see color. I don't, I don't have hang-ups about slavery, and I don't have hang-ups about my, being a, a, a servant of, from the answer. I don't have hang-ups. Too many of us have hang-ups that we carry with us. And they confuse communication in different cycles. And a lot of times, what we're speaking is not what we're saying. And we get offended when others don't respond to what we're saying, but they respond to what we spoke. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? So Zionists, if I might submit, if you want to be received, you have to identify nobody's going to understand you. It's fine. There are some who are going to like you, and there are some who will not like you. There are some who will support you, and there are others who will not support you. The best thing you could do is never walk with somebody else's chip on your shoulder. Don't walk with it. I don't walk with how many white people kill black people because equally black people kill black people and black people kill white people. I don't walk with how many white people take advantage of black people because black people take advantage of white people and it goes all circles around the world. I walk with Olukoya. How are you and I going to relate? Your Excellency Daniel, how are you and I going to relate? Because everything in life is based on an individual basis. However, if you meet someone that treats you on a collective basis, the stereotype, if you meet someone that treats you with a stereotypical mindset, oh, y'all, y'all black folks always, oh, people from your community are always, then you have problems. Then you determine how much intimacy you, de you develop with that individual. You determine that for yourself. Zionist, I hope that I, I answered your question and I hope I made some sense to what you're uh, re referring to, all taking things within context. Yes, Your Excellency. Much appreciated. Thank you. God bless you. you you're welcome. God bless you, man. Are there any other uh, comments? Olukoya, do you want to submit anything to the class this evening or any, any take on conversation with regards to communication? 
Thank you, Excellency, and thank you all the Excellency in the house. Uh, the point is well taken, and uh, and um, I think uh, what really uh, struck me. Uh, actually, I've been. I'm, I'm a very diplomatic person in my approach to life, but. Uh, this evening, you know, when uh, my dementia, it was as if somebody turned on the light bulb, you know, and uh, really something that we, we we must pay attention to, that we and we relate with people properly. Uh, it does not reduce us in any way, even if that person does not have respect for us. So uh, it does not mean that we too should not have respect for them. Uh, at a point, we should always, always be the, 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 the leader and the person to, 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 to chart the course and show good example. I think that is just my take home, you know, this evening. And it's very, very important. And, and I, I've written it down. And I'm going to meditate on it and, and build build on it. Diplomacy, relating with people, just like you were saying, that you may be signing the person's death warrant and the person doesn't know, but but you are relating with the person and uh, no no sign of offense or anything. I think that's very, very important. Very, very important. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. I appreciate that deeply. Thank you also, um, my big sister Zionist, for bringing up that point of uh, diplomacy. And it has really, I've seen it in another light this evening. Thank you very, very much. This is not to repeat any other point that have been made. Thank you very much, sir. You're, you're welcome, Your Excellency. And I, I want to, I'm not sure if we have Her, her Excellency, Her Excellency, um, I see. Adiola, you want to give your take on this evening's session? Your Excellency Adiola. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, Your Excellency. Good evening. Everyone. Uh, I really want to thank you for the opportunity to be in today's meeting. You know, as Shane was talking, you know, I actually raised my hands. I wanted to ask the question in this aspect of communication. You know that um, email, text message, WhatsApp messages, uh, they are means of communication getting to others that we can talk to directly. And you know, sometimes you send message to people you send email to people expecting them to respond and uh, they don't actually respond. You know, sometimes you wonder if communication are actually taking place. You know, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you just ignore it, you know, assume for people that um, communication has, has actually taken place. No, but when, um, you know, the, the, well, the topic, the talk, you know, kept on, uh, going, uh, I discovered that, you know, people have different way of responding to communication. You know, sometimes some people don't feel like it because they're not interested in what you say. So they don't, they don't want to listen. You know, so they're like a cultural barrier, I mean, cultural differences, you know, from different different, uh, like from different, okay, like where I come from, you know, if someone asks you a question or someone said a message to you, you know, you're expected to respond. You know, that shows that you understand what the person has said and you also have had. But, you know, if you do not respond, it will be like, wow, this person does not understand what I've said. This person has not got my message. And I kept on wondering, you know, why she was talking that. And as, com as communication actually taking place, but we're along the, along the line, you know, I discovered that, you know, people have different way of responding to communication, the way we talk to them, you know, you know, the way we pass things across to them. 
And uh, but in one thing, you know, I have understood is that uh, there is need for us to relate with wisdom uh, in order not to be offended and uh, in order not to uh, allow the other person also to be offended. You know, I really want to appreciate today and, uh, and you know, people not understanding who you are, you know, is another thing. But, you know, thank God for what has been discussed today. And, you know, just like my husband said, you know, I, there are things to learn. You know, there are ways, you know, we need to improve more the way we communicate to others, you know, that means we need to understand when communicating to others, okay, there may be factors, barriers affecting this person, not understanding, you know, what I'm saying. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you, all the excellency in the house. God bless every one of us. Thank you, sir. And you all, thank you so very much for that submission. And as a, as a matter of fact, I will, I will, I, I will speak to it because it is very important to speak to, to that particular point for ambassadors especially, is very important. I, I wanna give you a genuine dynamic and I want you to put a picture inside of your, of your mind, put a picture. I'm gonna give you a picture, I'll paint a picture for you. And it might be a very unusual picture, but I want to paint it for you. And the reason why I want to paint it for you is because when you step into different circles of life, there are different dynamics, very different dynamics. For example, in the business world, it depends on where you are on the full chain, how communication is. When you are in the Christian world or when you're in the family world, communication is always different, all right? I wanna share this with you. As you communicate with elders that are in business, especially elders, let's look at the elders. Elders in business do not really have time. They rarely have time. They rarely. Why? They have children. They have grandchildren. And I really want you to look at some dynamics, okay? They have children. They have grandchildren. Some person run corporations, businesses, staff, followers. They, they have so many dynamics in 24 hours to address. Are, are you with me? For example, I have a few thousand people on my personal network, personal, personal, a few thousand. Could you imagine if every day I spent communicating with all of the individual who reach out to communicate with me, what would happen to me? And I'm being genuine with us, all of us. Bishop Comfort, Her Excellency Doreen, Daniel, Zionist Curry, Olukoya, uh, all of us, Bishop Paul, all of us here as individuals, let's look at it. How do we determine who is more important than who? How do we determine those things? For me, everybody knows my class of steel team is priority. You guys are first. The class of steel is first. There are things that I deal with government. There are things that I deal with my personal business. There are things that I deal with my family. But class of steel is priority because this speaks of longevity and sustainability. And this is a legacy that I'm building and leaving behind. How many of you have your legacy that you're leaving behind that takes precedence above everything and everyone else? You have to. They're ministers that have their churches. I don't communicate with them because the class of steel is not a priority to them. I cannot communicate with them because they have congregants, persons they have to counsel, to mentor, persons that they're dealing with their business, their associates, their family. So you never ever assume that you are priority on somebody's list. Never assume it. If you do not assume your priority on someone's list, it gives you the capacity to respect when they get back to you. Are you with me? You respect it in humility. However, however, if you stop reaching out, be sure that if you stop reaching out, you will be totally ignored. Why? Because if you stop reaching out with the mindset, well, how many of you 
Well, I guess he doesn't want to take my calls. He's not interested in me. So I will stop calling him and, and I will just move on with my life and leave him. I'm sorry. And you just hang up and you forget about the person because you think the person is thinking about you. Please, I appeal to you. Don't ever put yourself on a pedestal that you are so important to any person that they're ignoring you is as if you are the subject of their day. Some days go by and I say to my wife, oh my goodness, darling, I haven't called Minister Yours for the whole day. And Minister Yours and I speak almost every day on every subject. His Excellency and I are the closest persons. Your Excellency, please confirm what I'm saying. But our schedules so can I just throw in the spanner in the works? The spanner is burning. Please. I want to say um, it might be the devil advocate, if I can use that expression. But um, talking <laughs> about non-verbal non uh, communication, when we travel to uh, Dubai as a diplomat, as an ambassador, and we were doing the connecting flight from uh, Amsterdam. There's something that maybe you never really fully discussed because I, I know it's a very sensitive topic, non-communication. There was a man, when we came up and you went and addressed to the, uh, to the um, what do you call it? The immigration officer that we are diplomats so we are coming through, let it through. And there was a white chap, a Caucasian, staring us out. He was staring me out, staring you out, giving me awful looks, et cetera, et cetera. And I know that that's racism, that's discrimination. The look was nasty. Two black men come up. He's in the first class. We've gone through and he stayed, because I spotted him long before you spotted him. And he was staring me out and I stayed back. What do you use the word? Diplomacy. The stare, I stare back, and what, what is your problem? What do you want? I never opened my mouth and my body language spoke. When you turn around and you use your elbow and say, look at that man staring at me. I said, no, I saw a long time. He was staring us out because he's in the first class the, um, of the plane. We're two black men. We he doesn't know who we are and we went through. Discrimination can come in so much different ways non-verbal communication. And because we were black, because we came through the airport, he didn't know how we do. He came directly and stand almost in front of us, staring at us. When we turn our head and he didn't get what he wanted to look, I don't know what he was looking for. He eventually walked on. What's your taking on that, sir? Your Excellency, please tell the audience what I told you because you know we had a thing and I said something to you. What did I say to you if you can remember your Excellency? Um, it was so much I can't remember. You would have to fresh, fresh my memory. What did you say? This, this is what, what, I, what I said and, and what I was reiterating. Because I'm a profiler, anytime I walk into any environment, I observe every single person. A lot of you might walk into circles and you're just walking into circles. You, you have to be very mindful of where you're going and what you're doing. Right. And I observe individuals in every circle I go to. And when I see an individual that creates that negative energy pertaining to me, I personally avoid eye contact. That's the first thing I do. I avoid eye contact. Why? because I clearly know they're trying to get my attention, mm. clearly. The second thing that I do is I humble myself and I try to see if there is some way I could find to be pleasant to the person, if possible, if necessary. If it is not possible and it is not, sorry, if it is not necessary or it is not possible, I do not exert do you know who I am ever? I do not ever do that, never. Here's why. As a diplomat, always remember, or as an ambassador, you don't have any right 
as an ambassador, everything is a courtesy. Mm -hmm. Please understand that word. You, you, you don't have any right per se. It's called courtesy, diplomatic courtesy. Even missions that are in the United Kingdom that have their diplomatic mission in the United Kingdom, it's a, it's a courtesy that the government of the United Kingdom gives to their ambassadors. Mm. And there's such a thing that you would say is diplomatic immunity revoked. It's a courtesy that can be revoked. Mm -hmm. Why would it be revoked? It would be revoked based on your behavior, your character. And as a matter of fact, your character will be tested in the earliest stages of your mission. It will be tested. Why? Because they want to know if my citizens complain for you, are my citizens going to be telling the truth? So who better to find out first than me testing you? So if you behave this way to someone I sent to you, how much greater will you behave negatively to someone that I didn't send that is going to come and report you to me? As diplomats, you are watched. You are under surveillance. Your phone might be tapped. When you go into a country, mm -hmm. it's not a problem. You don't have to worry about your phone being tapped if you're operating with integrity and transparency. I say to individuals, I do not care who's listening to me and who's watching me. Why? Because the same thing that I'm saying to you in secret, if you get to hear I said it, mm -hmm. I, am, I am man enough to, to represent what I said. As an ambassador, you always have to be professional. You never behave as though you have some great privilege that others cannot receive. Don't ever think that you are more special than anyone else. We are not. That's why I do not align myself with certain individuals or organization because some individuals take this to think that there are laws unto themselves within the land. You're not. Mm -hmm. Your Excellency, when you and I came through and, and we were looking at, they were putting individuals in the red zone, I said simply, if they tell us that we have to pay $1,700 or pounds and quarantine, what did I say to you we will do, Your Excellency? What did I say? So I can't remember. You'd have to refresh me. We will just have to figure out a way how we will get it oh. done. <laughs> yes. Why? Because we just present our dynamics and our credentials and trust the rule of law and courtesy that they will honor us with respect. That's all. Mm -hmm. We give them respect and trust that they will honor us in giving it back to us. Mm -hmm. As ambassadors, I do not mentor rogues and vagabonds and individuals that think a piece of shiny metal is going to cause them to exercise authority against and over the law. No, mm. it does not. Mm. And I hope that that is clear to all of us. I, I hope that diplomacy becomes an understanding and not just a piece of metal on your arm or your shoulder or our certificate or your wall. I hope it becomes an understanding of a lifestyle mm -hmm. that gives you respect. And by the way, you also are in a position where you can command respect diplomatically. <laughs> Bishop Comfort, I see you are very quiet this evening, listening, full ears. Uh, do you want to lend your voice to this di diplomatic discussion because we're getting ready to close. We've gone on quite long this evening. Thank you so very much for being with us. And I, I really am going to get ready to close us. But what is your take, Your Excellency, Dr. Comfort, uh, representing Ghana? And by the way, 
The reason when I say somebody is representing the country is because I am making sure that person knows how I behave, how I operate. Because when somebody says that Bishop Comfort or Minister Ewers does X, Y, Z, I will call you to task because you're representing the class of students. You're representing diplomacy and the wisdom that I share. And I hope that you do that with integrity that organizations can say, we vouch for those that come through the class of students. Bishop Comfort, Your Excellency, what is your take on this evening's class? Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, Bishop Batamaki is still a pleasant evening to all the excellencies and everybody. Um, yes, I've been quiet because uh, this is a topic that uh, in archives we, we run through often. And, uh, and uh, it has two sides. When I look at communication, when you are talking about diplomacy, <laughs> that is another side. Yes, yes. But when you are with your own family, or like uh, the class of states of family, you don't have to be diplomatic. <laughs> the Bible says, speak the truth in love so that the person understands what you are talking about. The person takes it mm -hmm. or leave it. There is something that we call noise in communication. When the person does not like the uh, conversation or uh, it does not favor the person, it becomes like a noise to the person. The person may choose to take it or not. And as an ambassador, when you are sent elsewhere or anywhere to deliver, all that you have to look to, to in, in my opinion, is that you, may, you must make sure that the, the communication gap is clear. You must make the person to understand what you are telling the person. Especially, you look at the cultural aspects. There are certain things that you have to look at. I remember there was a time my senior brother has been in the US since 69. And when he was going to US, US, I mean USA, we, we were calling trousers, trousers. But he came down one day and he, he was asking that, where are my pants? We, 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 we the Americans call trousers pants. You understand, pants. And we have different meaning for pants. I don't know about British people. But Ghanaians uh, 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 took their English from the uh, English is also quite different. So also is uh, the Caribbeans and other places. So yeah. as an ambassador, before you communicate to uh, uh, somebody in another country, you must be sure of the, the, the culture of the place and the, their way of living so that what, what we use you tell a Ghanaian and will not be uh, offended. Maybe when you tell uh, 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 somebody from another country, the person may be offended. Mm. So there's a whole ball game in communication. Yes. You can't take one day to study communication. Yes, there yes. are so many things yes. in communication that we have to look at, especially as ambassadors, so mm. that you'll be able to deliver. In this sense, what it means is that one should be able to deliver at any point in time in any place. And we have to be cautious in your, your, your dealings with people. And you also, when we talk about diplomacy that I heard this evening, I, I stand for correction, but I think one has to be careful how to deliver in terms of where the people are. So my take this evening is that, in fact, we must go more and more into communication so that we'll be able to give our utmost. Thank you so much. I salute everyone and I bring it to And also thanks to first lady. She reminded me of the school times. Maybe have some of our people who are at her, who were in the, um, uh, the airport when they come out for their the their lane on the Alpha Delta, and we were all learning that. But when we, we we left school, we have forgotten about all that. 
And I think I would like, very much like to go back to that and then learn. It's universal. Everywhere you go, you can use that. So thank you, your first lady. Yes, yes. I want to celebrate Zoom because today we heard Ghana without any troubles clearly. I want to celebrate. Come on, let's celebrate Zoom this evening. How many of you were noticing that like I was? Minister Ewers, did you notice that as well? That we heard Minister Doreen, did you notice that? I think they heard me. You heard, you heard me. <laughs> I think they took me serious. I communicated. You heard me right. <laughs> Yeah, I have bought a, 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 a wifey. Say, that, say again, please. I said, I have Wi-Fi there. So they, they, they heard us this evening. So I want to, Your Excellency, I do agree with you. Uh, I do agree with you, and I'll share a, a secret that most people do not know, but I can tell you, and the public will know it now. The secret with my mentoring in the class of steel is this. Doreen represents Uganda and, and DRC. Olukoya represents Nigeria. Olukoya and his wife represent Nigeria. Minister Ewers have a, a strong knowledge of the UK and the dynamics here and also traveling and other individuals. He's well-rounded, so he can advise me very well and, and make sense with his, with his advice. Her Excellency Bishop Comfort knows um, Ghana at the highest levels, and she understands the culture, the dynamics. My role personally, Her Excellency uh, Bishop um, Comfort will tell you, Her Excellency Doreen will tell you, the king of Ghana has no authority to even reach out to me personally outside of Bishop Comfort, why? because I have absolutely no interest in him personally, other than the fact that once we are doing something together, I understand how to be culturally appropriate around him. And how can I appreciate and get that wisdom? By following the instructions of, the, of Dr. Comfort. How could I understand how to behave in Uganda? I need Her Excellency Doreen, I need her. If, if Her Excellency Doreen decides for any reason she, she doesn't want to step up to this plate, I have to find somebody else in, in Uganda that I'm going to take time to get to know them, take time to get to know the culture, take time to see the culture through their eyes mm. so that I can approach their country. I will not approach a country to support it, assist it, help its businesses or its dynamics without understanding the end grain of the culture. And with that being said, that is one of the secrets of being successful. Find somebody and trust that person. Mm. Be real with that person. Be vulnerable with that person. Voice your frustrations with that person. Voice your approvals with that person. Voice your disapproval with that person but always be in a place where you could get the feedback. Because guess what? If you did the, the disapproval with the wrong person, you will get the uh, result you don't want and you can destroy a whole nation of diplomatic relations. Mm. So you have to be culturally or fair, you have to be politically correct, and you have to know people that are in a position to tell you, you don't tell me when to do it. Let me tell you when to approach him. Let me tell you when to approach her. You don't tell me when you want to hold a meeting in my country. You let me tell you when is an acceptable time to hold that meeting, to hold that conference. You don't tell me who to invite to that conference in my country let me tell you what the political dynamics on the ground are so you don't bring enemies to the table for the same meeting and it will be counterproductive because why? You have this body telling you, oh, this is a good man for you to bring to the table. Oh, that's a good man. But you did not recognize that culturally they are at each other's throats. And if you ever invite the two of them to represent you, 
you could have dynamics that can frustrate, that can frustrate good relationship. So always remember, if you are ever going to attack and address a country, address the country from the eyes of one advisor, one guy. If you're gonna approach a country politically, go through one political party. Don't go through two and three because you will have dynamics that will cause you problems in your negotiating. You can't expect to have persons from the out party that are sitting on the fence trying to get in and trying to empower and impact you within the government. You have to get persons on the inside. Because why? The persons on the inside are going to be undermined by the person on the outside trying to get in. And if you put the two of them on the same table, you will have conflict. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Michael Steele. I want to thank you so very much for sitting in the class of Steele. That's just a snippet of a little bit of the wisdom that I believe that we have to share in the class of Steele. I want to thank all of you for being with us this evening. I want to give a special thanks to our guest this evening, His Excellency Minister Donald Ewers, the, the Chief of Protocol, Her Excellency Dore Barunji. I want to thank Zionist Curry for being with us, His Excellency Olukoyo, Olusoyu uh, Gun Olukoya for being with us. I want to thank my beautiful wife. And then without any final ado, I will say Shane Marshall, our special guest, you did a great job today. You stimulated us, you gave us some food for thought, and you opened the doors for great dialogue in the class of steel. For those of you who are watching on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on YouTube, I want to appeal to you, come and join us in the class of steel. We will have classes that will appeal to you. Don't look at what it's going to cost you in time. Look at what it will save you in wisdom, in understanding, in dynamics that can cause you to reach to the next level successfully. For us in the class of steel, we're a family. We don't behave as though we are greater than anybody else. All of us are great in our own places, in our own position. All of us have something to teach us because from our vantage point, from our viewpoint of life, we are very unique. And every uniqueness adds value to a class. I wanna appreciate our partners, Leaders Without Borders Development Center and our newly appointed and, and connected partners who are getting with us, the LEAP. All of you guys, thank you so very much for being with us. I'm Dr. Michael Steele, my beautiful wife, Her Excellency Jeannie. Good night and God bless. Bye-bye, everybody. And by the way, we are live and we are real. <laughs> Your Excellency Doreen, I'm going to give you a call. We need to chat. All right. Bye-bye.